say our final goodbyes to Theda, a mother, a grandmother, a great friend of this church and an important figure in my own life during my pastor here at Calvary. Saying goodbye is not easy, but remembering the promise of God for eternal life lightens the, burn, the journey and that's something that Theta understood and knew well. If you would allow me to, I'd like to share some of the same scriptures that I stood here seven months ago and shared at Carlos's funeral. One that I must have read over to the two of them in the funeral home so very many times. The Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures, and he leads me beside still waters. 
He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the very valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Do not let your heart be troubled, Jesus said. You believe in the Father, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, but I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself and take you with me. You know the way. You know the place, Jesus said to his disciples. Thomas said, no. I don't know where you're going. I don't know how to get there. And Jesus said, I am the way, and I am the truth, and I am the life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For Jesus did not come into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Behold, I show you a mystery. We will not all sleep in death, but we will be changed in a moment in a twinkling of an eye at the sound of the last trump, because the trumpet will sound one day, and the dead in Christ will rise, and this perishable will put on imperishability, and this mortal will put on immortality. And then we'll be brought to pass the same. Death is swallowed up in victory. Amen. You know what I'd like to do? I'd like to pray for you, if that's okay. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the life and the journey of Theta. Thank you that we learn about hard times, need for change in our lives, and commitment to follow you. As we share scripture together today, share memories together, we pray that you would make this a special and precious time for all of us. Amen. I do know what one of Peter's favorite, favorite hymns was. In front of you somewhere, there is a hymn book, and I would invite you to take it out and sing the first and the last verses of this song with me. By Austin Miles, it's called In the Garden. I come to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses.
many memories for each one of us that have to do with Thea that it would be impossible for us to share them all today. And it never seems quite right to try to reduce a person's whole life, the warmth of their smile, touch of their hand, the shelter of their arms, to try to reduce that into just a few words. But for those of you who may be here who are neighbors that did not know Theda well, let me just share a little bit about her. And then uh, one of the family members is going to come up and share some thoughts as well. Theda, daughter of Charles and Charlotte Elliott, was born on September 5, 1927, near Jamesport in Trenton, Missouri. Theda attended school in Trenton and later earned her GED in 1955. Theda was married at age 16 to Gavin Asher and to this union, five children were born. They later divorced. She married Carlos Reither, and on March 18, 1954, in Chillicothe, Missouri, they were united. To this union, two children were born. Thea and Carlos moved back and forth between Oskaloosa and Missouri for several years, and finally in 2004, they stayed here permanently. In addition to raising her children, Theda worked as a waitress. She owned Molly's Cafe, worked at a ladies' ready and wear store, and was a bookkeeper for Lamson Mobile Home Park for 12 years and for DRS Trucking for 20 years. After her retirement in 1995, she enjoyed knitting, crochet, and quilting. It was just downstairs, just before the service. And I noticed that the quilting ladies from our church had an unfinished quilt uh, that they were getting ready to put together for the final time. It's interesting, isn't it? How the writer says that our lives are like quilts that we put together and that God puts together and then finally it's done and he calls us home. She was president of the Oskaloosa Business and Professional Women's Group. She was a part of the Hasta Quilt, Quilt, Quilting Guild and participated in Thursday morning quilting at Calvary Church. Peter's family includes five daughters, Charlotte, Connie, Carla, Vicki, a son, Lee, a stepson, Larry, a brother, Carol, 15 grandchildren and 19 great grandchildren. That's a lot more than I have. I, that's an amazing thing to me, how people's families grow. Someone, I think it was Charlotte, gave me a couple of little things uh, to read to you today concerning their mom. We miss her smiles and visits more than words can say. All that's left are memories of her useful ways. We saw her growing weaker as each day passed. God called our precious mother to him with him at last. If there's a place in heaven much higher than the rest, we are sure she'll be right up there among the very best. This poem is short and simple. We have said our last goodbye. Let's try not to be unhappy, for angels never die. That's a nice thought, isn't it? If this weak heart but had its choice, I hear this night my Savior's voice and soaring swift through time and space. I see this night my Savior's face. I think that probably kind of sums up these thoughts in the last days of her life. She understood the address of heaven. She committed herself to it. And she knew that she was on a journey that would take her there. Stacy, where are you? Where are you, Stacy? Stacy's going to come up and share a little bit from the kids for us.
First of all, I want to thank you all for being here as we celebrate our beautiful grandma. She was one of a kind, and we were so lucky to have been loved by her. As you heard, she had 15 of us crazy kids. Becky's the oldest, Shelly's the baby, and all the way in between. We were her pride and joy. That was until the greats came along, and that's a whole different story. As I asked everyone to share memories of Grandma, there were several words that just kept coming up. Loving, open, honest, caring, welcoming, classy, generous, a tremendous gardener, talented seamstress, mint maker, and world-class cook. How many of you have tasted Grandma's cooking? She was one of the good ones. We had numerous family gatherings together, but the ones that were the most fun were the ones where we celebrated holidays. Well, there would be our trick-or-treat supper, so we'd all parade around town and then go to Grandma's and have soup and sandwiches and fun goodies. Christmas, that was something to behold. For us that lived in town, we had to help with all the cleaning and the preparation and getting things ready for all of you that lived out of town. We waited anxiously. We waited for Ryan and Brent to come from Illinois, Angie to come from Louisiana, Tammy from Arkansas. But once you got here, the joy started, and it didn't stop. Dance recitals at Grandma's, that crazy box of toys, that black box that matches Becky's shirt. You remember, don't you? Yep. Grandma made some of the most amazing gifts. She made life-size Andy dolls for us girls and Sandy dolls for the boys. How many of you remember those? There's a picture somewhere up here. As we got older, she made beautiful hand-quilted tree skirts, afghans, homemade stockings with our name. The love sewn into each of those gifts is now a treasured keepsake. A few other memories were a little bit specific. She took Sean to the stock car races on Wednesday night. I don't know how you did that, buddy. Um, sorry, I lost my train of thought. She let Tammy come to DRS coffee time and drink her own coffee. Grandma was a lover of coffee, but she'd share it when it was cold. Grandma even took care of Angie when she was in labor with Anna. She turned out pretty good, didn't she? Kara remembers a time when Grandma would she'd spend the night on Sunday night or Saturday night and go to church with Grandma. And some of you might not know this, but our Grandma picked up two little ladies and took them to church. We could only remember one of their names, and it was Beverly. And the other lady, they would bicker who could sit in the front seat. And afterwards, on the way home, when it was just us and Grandma, she'd kind of make fun of those ladies because <laughs> they were funny. Uh, Chuck cherishes his tea time with Grandma. They would just sit and visit. Becky shared a time when Grandma took her and Renee to get their ears pierced. Back in those old days, you had to go to the doctor to get ears pierced. So Renee and Becky, being little, they were a little anxious about that. But Grandma offered to go first. And Becky said she remembers Grandma did not even flinch. And she said, see, it didn't hurt. Renee went. But then Becky, being Becky, she still doesn't like jewelry to this day. <laughs> it did hurt. <laughs> and I think that's something she still remembers even today. One of the favorite times with Grandma was our Friday night to go get her hair done. Grandma was always fixy with her hair. And we would go to the old Atkins Mall, and I would get to walk around with a dollar. Because that was back in the day, you could actually buy something for a dollar. And then we'd go to Major right afterwards for supper. <laughs> and she would leave all beautiful for the week. The little trip down memory made because of Grandma is something that we all share different stories. And I hope that you hold those close to your heart as we go through the next few days. 
Another thing about Grandma, you might not know, she was an extraordinary gardener. That lady had a garden a block and a half long. You guys remember that, right? Yeah. She um, would let us get right there in the dirt and play along, even if we didn't do it the way she told us. And she is the reason that most of us like to eat peas straight out of the shell with a little dirt. Grandma was known for a few of her special recipes, handballs, potato soup with noodles, chocolate waffle cookies, right, Jacob? Yeah. 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 Those were the best. She was also a very talented mint maker and made special mints for graduation, wedding, and all the baby celebrations. As we grew up and started having families of our own, Grandma welcomed our spouses with open arms as she hosted big family dinners, and she was always willing to watch her greats, even when they were sick. But she quickly began to spoil them too, making them their favorite treats, cheering them on the, as their dance recitals and basketball games. Our grandma was a woman of many talents, but the one that sticks out most was her willingness to serve. You heard a little about, about that already today. Anytime the church was open, grandma was there. She taught Sunday school, she served at funeral lunches, hosted ladies' prayer and share, decorated for special occasions like Mother's Day when she made all our bonnets and we had to match. Most of the time, she worked behind the scenes and she did not want praise or recognition for her work. She loved Jesus and she served him with joy in her heart. She started a legacy that now spans generations and it was it, with joy that I can picture Grandma standing face to face with Jesus as he said, well done, good and faithful servant. As you remember Grandma, I challenge you to be her hands and feet, to finish this legacy that she has left for all of us. Thank you. Thank you, Stacy. Appreciate you sharing those memories. I can indeed remember uh, to you at every funeral, I think well, almost in this church that we did, looking back there and seeing her in the kitchen, uh, getting things ready for a family because she cared about the families of our community and of our church. Here is a song that Theta requested. <laughs> Thank you. 
Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for every life lived before us. The simple lives that we sometimes overlook. The lives of challenge and difficulty that reminds us that we too can overcome. We thank you specifically today for Peter's life. We thank you for this family who loved her and in her last days, as she was taking her journey home, stood around her and cared for her. We pray that from her life we would learn instructive things. In Jesus' name, amen. A line from the song says, I want to introduce you to this friend of mine. You just heard it. And I guess I would kind of like to do that too. Family has introduced you to Theta, those of you who just never kind of marginally. But I would like to introduce you to her very best friend, who is Jesus Christ. I've been reading a book about the settlement of the Midwest. How people who came to Iowa and Missouri came up uh, the Mississippi River, up through St. Louis. Others of them came west across the prairies of Illinois, Indiana, coming to Iowa for the fertile ground in northern Missouri. Some of the descendants of those early settlers staked their claim in Jamesport, Missouri, Jamesport, Missouri, and Trenton. Two of those families who settled in that area were my maternal family and Theta's family. Those settlers take us back to another time and another place as do our memories as we think about Theta this day. Theta lived a life of challenge and change. She grew up during the Depression. She was born, what did it say, in 1927. That was two years before the Great Depression 
struck and within a day the whole economy of the United States fell apart. Her daddy owned a grocery store during those couple of years before the Depression. But once the Depression set in, people were only able to buy food for their family on credit. He extended credit as long as he could and then finally had to close his little grocery store and the family was plunged into poverty of the Great Depression. So Theda walked to school every day, even on cold mornings, carrying her little lunch in a bucket with a lid on the top. Because of the lean circumstances, it usually consisted of a peanut butter sandwich, some crackers, and if there was an apple from the farm, an apple. But with 11 kids in the family, there was a lot of love to share. But change and challenge confront us with some serious questions. In fact, today, this moment, this time, confronts us with life's most important question. What will happen to us after we die? Because you see, this is a way that every one of us will pass. Some are policemen and soldiers and firemen and they know that they're risking their life and understand that at some point it's going to end. But the truth is it will be like that for every one of us. And the scripture says it's appointed unto every man, every woman, every person who wants to die and then to stand before God in the judgment. Well, the question that every one of us face then is what, what will it be like at the end of our life? This journey that we're on that, oh, I thought about it yesterday. I just turned a corner. I wish I was young not very long ago. And the years go by and our journey progresses and then all of a sudden we find ourselves beginning to say, our goodbyes and settle our affairs because we know that for everyone else it will be like that for us. We will ultimately journey out of this world. So today I want to talk to you for just a few minutes about about what God teaches us about eternal life. Just as it is written in our hearts and we know that our life will not be very long compared to eternal things. 70, 80, 90 years. It's so brief, so short. But in spite of that, God writes eternity in all of creation. It's, in, it's written into the nature of small towns like this one in James Fort in Trenton. God teaches us about eternal life through lasting relationships and memories of people like Theda and this family. He's written it in the hearts of people. Small town folks, simple lives lived, but every one with a message for us. All of creation speaks of eternal life. It's written in the seasons of the year. The spring, the summer, the fall, the winter, and then spring again. Consider the lilies that grow and die for the winter and then come alive again in spring. It can be like that for you, for every one of us. Not because we are perhaps as exceptionally good as we ought to be, maybe not even as good as Theta. Probably not. But God offers to us eternal life when we see it in those seasons, and God, as surely as you die, will raise you once again. Eternity is written in the story of the sea. Peter came by 
Stacy, if Peter came by gardening honestly. Because during the Depression, her father gardened. Things were so bad that that's how he tried to feed the family. And he would garden and the family would take part of it and he would take the rest of town and go to the homes of people who didn't have gardens and try to sell enough produce to be able to sustain their little family. He understood the secret that's hidden in the sea. You've done it. I did it last fall. Had, somebody had to come and dig up our yard for some for problem that we had. So we dug it all up and then they filled it all in again. So I went out in the fall and I sowed some seed. And it rained and I would go out every day to look for, at the seed, see how it was doing, and it didn't do anything. Nothing. And fall went by, and winter came, and I would look out the window past the deck on our house, and I would look at that seed, and it was just there. I knew that some of it was under the ground, some of it was laying on the top, but it was all dead. Then this spring, early this spring, after some early rains that we had, I got up one morning, and I just happened to glance out the window and I saw that there was green there. And I thought, oh, now it's gotten all moldy. And it's just turning green. Later in the day, I was out there and I looked over and the seed had sprung to life. It was beginning to grow again. St. Paul, in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, in a wonderful literary chapter describes what the resurrection is like. How people are raised from the dead and go to be in the presence of God. And that's what he says. He says, you know what? It's just like a seed. You plant the seed, it lays in the ground, it looks for all the world as though it's dead and that it springs to life again and it will be the same with every child of God. It's there for you. It's as clear as the signs along the highway. You can read them in the churches in every small town in Iowa because as the people came west and built the little towns, one of the very first things they built was a church and a school. And the message of eternal life was in every one of them in the beginning. You can see it in everything that God has created. So the question is, what will we do with that? Theta grew up in a family that was not particularly a church family. She had an aunt that was a preacher's wife and she would be with the kids and tell them a little bit about the Lord. Later someone suggested to her that she needed to be baptized. She was baptized but she didn't really know what she was doing. It wasn't until she came to Oskaloosa. I actually chilled coffee to begin with attended the Baptist church there when someone explained to her salvation and how you can be sure that you have eternal life. And she did three things, and this is what I want to close with. First, she believed. I don't know how it was when those people were coming across the prairies and the covered wagons. Many of them carried Bibles with them. Many of them had been raised in churches. I don't know how hard it was for them to believe, but I want to tell you, I commend you today if you're a believer, because we live in an incredibly unbelieving time. 
But Peter made that choice to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And the scripture says, if we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, if we believe with our hearts and confess with our mouth that he is Lord, we will be saved for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but should have everlasting life. That's what she did. She believed, she confessed her sins and asked for the mercy of God. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. And finally, she gave her whole life completely to the Lord. She was a part of a generation, Stacy said, who when they talked about going to church and being church members, literally meant that they were there every time the church was open. They were there Sunday morning, they were there Sunday night, they were there Wednesday night, they were there if there were special services, if there was a funeral, they were there. Their whole lives were committed and given to the Lord. I note things about people, write them down on my heart and in a little book I have, and there were some things about Peter that I wrote down, lessons of life, I call them. Number one, having grown up in the Great Depression, I think we learn from Theta today to make the best of things. Whatever our circumstance is, whatever our situation, make the best of things. Second, never give up. Third, love your family. And fourth, keep faith alive in your heart because that's the journey from here to eternity. And it will happen for every one of us. You know what? I'd like you to sing one of Peter's favorite songs. So we're going to close with this. Turn to page number 270. Sing just a verse in the chorus of In the Garden. Just verse in the chorus of In the Garden. We'll sing it together. I come to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses. Let's sing together. seed of Peter's body will lie in the ground till whatever time you deem is correct but her spirit is already with you already in heaven rejoicing with Carlos and other sinners but we thank you Lord for the resurrection even of our bodies that's coming that you will leave no part of us unredeemed and as we go to the cemetery we pray that you would be our Savior and our Lord in a day of unbelief, Lord, help us to be believers. Amen.
have a little baby girl child just a stone's throw from here in the cemetery and now we lay a grandmother to rest near the child. That seems like a, a good thing, the right thing to do. Stacy was telling me, so I was standing by the vehicle getting ready to come over, that in her little children's group at the church that 11 children had given their hearts to the Lord. And she said, Grandma's cycle just keeps going. Yes. That's a wonderful thing. Well, my friend, we commit you into the arms of the Lord Jesus Christ. God is our refuge and the very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. The mercy of the Lord is from everlasting upon them that fear him and his righteousness unto their children's children. Here we commit this body to its kindred dust, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. The spirit we leave with God, for we know that the judge of all of the earth will do right, and may our trust be in him who said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth on me, though he die, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me will never really die, but have eternal life. Let's pray. Father, here in this beautiful place, a place where within just a few feet, seeds will be sown again this spring. We sow this body of our loving sister. We thank you that she is in spirit and soul already in your arms. We leave this body to be resurrected in the day of great resurrection and change so that this imperishable and more immortal goes to be with you. Thank you for this family and the strength. Watch over them. Pray that as they share stories and memories, it will be a time of joy for them. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit we pray.